Okay, gang, welcome back to another Dynamics video. Today we're going to have a little bit of a review. We're going back to calculus for a second. And we're going to talk about cylindrical coordinate systems and how you convert from cylindrical to rectangular and rectangular to cylindrical. And uh, because we're going to need this for the next section when we talk about, uh, when we talk about motion, equations of motion uh, in a cylindrical or rotating fashion. So this should be a review, but let's go back over this one more time, okay? Cylindrical coordinate system is given with a different set of coordinates than our typical rectangular. So rectangular, we're used to an x, a y, and a z coordinate, okay? But in the cylindrical system, if I can spell it, cylindr, cylind, that's an r, trickle, okay, would be something like this. You get an r, a theta, and then a z, okay? So this is, this is rectangular, this is cylindrical. What we want to do is be able to go from this system to this system and then back again, okay? So people get all worked up over this, but this is really simple, and I'm going to show you real quick uh, how to keep this straight and how to make it simple, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. All we got to do is think back to statics, okay? Think back to math. When we had this, okay? Here's just a simple coordinate system. Here was our x. Here was our y, and we were given polar coordinates. If you remember polar coordinates, right, we said like vector r is equal to uh, 15 pounds at an angle of 30 degrees, right? And this was our r, or the magnitude of r, and this guy over here was our theta. And it's the exact same thing here in cylindrical coordinate systems. So this is not something new. This is something we ought to be able to do, okay? So if we have some vector of some distance, r, right? And then theta was here. Theta is always measured from the x-axis. And of course, we remember that this is positive and this is negative, okay? And so this guy had two components to him. Here we had, for the x component, we had... Uh, r cos theta, this is r, and then for the y component, which is here, we had y is equal to r sine theta, okay? Easy, right? And then, of course, how big is r? Well, it's x squared plus y squared square root, right? So r is equal to, or at least the magnitude, we should say the magnitude of r, x squared plus y squared square root, okay? So that's simple stuff. We remember that back from math class. Polar coordinates, okay? So we had an r and we had a theta. So what is cylindrical? There's my r and there's my theta, and then what the heck is that? Okay, so here we go. Let me draw you a cylinder right quick. Okay, we'll sketch a cylinder. Okay. Let's see if I can do this the same size. Okay. Okay, so something like that, there's a, that's a hidden line, as you can clearly see, okay? There's my cylinder, okay? And let me put the coordinate system on there. Here's our coordinate system, something like this, okay? Let's say that uh, this is X, here's Y, and then here was our Z. Okay, going right up through the middle there. Okay, so we have a cylinder, and on the bottom of that cylinder there is the, uh, down on the bottom there, in the XY plane, is just going to be our plain little polar guy here, okay? So let's say that we had a point right here, okay? Well, here we go. So I get this. What I get is, is this. There's, here's theta. Remember... Theta is measured from the x-axis going towards the y for positive. Okay, so here's the x-axis going towards the y for positive. There's theta, and here is r. Okay, now r is a projection on the plane here. So if we go up then to here, okay, let's get one more color. And like this would be... Maybe our final vector, our 3D cylindrical vector, right, would go from the origin up to this point, okay? So the question is, what is the coordinates of that point right there? Well, the coordinates are R, or the cylindrical coordinates are R, theta, 
and Z, okay? R is this, is this swing angle on the floor. We used to call that phi back in statics, okay? But here it's, it's referred to as theta. So that swing angle on the floor, R is the length of the vector or the kind of the radius of the cylinder there. And then Z, guess what Z is? It's just, well, it's just Z, right? It's just how far off the, off the floor is it? Okay, so Z is easy to remember because it is just, it's just Z. It's a distance in the Z direction, okay? And so this is all, that's all there is to this. So I use this and this, right, to come up with an X and a Y coordinate, and the Z is just plain Z, okay? And so if you wanted to calculate, if you give me this and you want this, how do I find X? Well, X is simply R times the cosine of theta. Y is simply R times the sine of theta. And Z, this is a difficult one here, Z is, well, Z is just Z, isn't it? Okay? So if you give me this, I can go to here. Well, what if you give me this and I need to go there, right? Well, if you give me the X and the Y, then you've given me this and this, right? So how do you calculate theta from that? Theta, how about, how about uh, tangent if you give me X and a Y, right? So tan theta is equal to Y divided by X. So if you give me this, I can get my theta out of that. That's how I go back from, that's how I go from rectangular to cylindrical is with this simple equation. And of course, how do I find R? Well, it's right there, right? It's just the square root of X squared plus Y squared, right? There's R. And then how do I find Z? Well, in both systems, in both systems, Z is just Z, okay? And that's, if you remember, that's how you do that. So cylindrical coordinates is just a way to express a, a coordinate given the radius of the cylinder and that swing angle from the positive x-axis, okay? So if I give you, if, the, if theta is a positive value, that means I'm rotating that way. I could give you theta as a negative value, but that would just mean from the x-axis I rotate the other direction. It's that simple, okay? So the, the tricky thing is, or the most important thing is, is you, and you can look at this, right? The coordinates of that point. That point is above quadrant number one in octant number one. And so it's going to have a positive X, a positive Y, and a positive Z. If it was in this quadrant over here, or this octant over here, which is octant number four, right? One, two, three, four, right? It would have a positive Z, a positive X, but a negative Y. So just be mindful of your sign on where your vector falls in your cylindrical coordinate system. And you should be able to go from rectangular to polar and polar, or cylindrical rather, uh, back to rectangular, okay? So that's just a quick review of what a cylindrical coordinate system is. I hope this helps for the next section, which we're gonna be talking about equations of motion in a cylindrical coordinate system. Thanks for watching.